Monarch's GPX detectors have always been known for their superior ability to find elusive gold nuggets in highly mineralised gold fields. But what's less well known is how great the GPX series is at finding US Civil War relics in red clay areas like Virginia. We get regular reports from GPX owners finding bullets at up to 20 inches and larger belt buckles as deep as two feet. One successful relic hunter has found 719 bullets in less than four months. Although, there is a growing number of relic hunters catching on to the GPX abilities. We at MineLab received many questions about how to best set up these detectors for finding relics instead of gold. Let's see a demonstration from Nenard about how to set up a GPX series detector for finding relics in mineralised ground. Alright, so we've got a GPX 5000 here and we're going to show you how easy it is to set it up to look for relics uh, in some highly mineralised ground. So we'll start with the, with the front panel switches here. Alright, so here's our uh, front control panel. Um, we'll set up the switches first. This here is our search mode. We've got deep, we've got general and we've got custom. Now in custom we've got four different search modes to pick from. We select them from the menu. And the one we're going to select is high mineral. Uh, it's already set up for highly mineralised ground. And work very well with for relic hunting. So we'll put that up into custom. We've got our soil timings here. Normal is probably the, the best starting point. It gives you a good um, compromise between depth and sensitivity and ground stability. Now next here we've got our coil RX switch. We've got cancel mono and double D. Now we're going to be using iron rejection to get rid of our nails and wire and other other bits of junk so we have to have that on double D that'll give us our, our best performance of iron rejection and the last one here we've got ground balance we'll start that off in fixed and that allows you to ground balance using the quick track button now up here we've got threshold you adjust that to a faint hum um, just before you start detecting and this little button here is our auto tune or noise cancel. Uh, before you start detecting, you press that and you wait for a minute as it scans through all the available channels and it'll pick the quietest channel which will minimise any interference in the area. So let's have a look at the back panel. Alright, switch the detector on. Just to wait a few seconds for it to stabilise. We've got our function select knob here, we want to scroll down, we get the patch, that's the factory preset uh, mode in custom, we want to select high mineral, because we're in some highly mineralised ground, so you find high mineral there, and with the function select, that activates that search mode, so now you're in high mineral, now we're going to be using iron reject, we don't want to be digging up nails and other ferrous junk. So we scroll down. Got iron reject there. You can see that it's off. So we turn our setting knob and we'll activate the iron reject. So we'll put it on six for starters. With the iron reject, the higher the number, the more deep you're going to reject first junk. With a lower setting, you will only reject very shallow, large, obvious junk. So about six is a good compromise. Right, so we've just got a bunch of non-ferrous and ferrous targets here. I want to show you how the iron reject works. Basically, if you get a, if you get a clean signal, it's usually a good target, something you can dig. Signal breaks up, sort of goes silent momentarily, and it's usually ferrous. It'll crumple up a bit of wire here. You can hear how that signal drops away. Put a nail. Another nail.
Uh, we've got a brass. I have an old stud or something. Nice clean signal. Small silver coin. Got a cheap religious medallion. Nice clean signal. And a big big lead bullet. Don't know what caliber that is, but it's pretty huge. All diggable signals. Whereas the ferrous one blanking out obviously. So you save yourself a, a lot of digging and only pick up the good stuff. So what makes the GPX series so good for elk hunting? Let's ask some of our experts. Phil, there's quite a bit of technology in the GPX detectors. Can you tell us how that technology separates GPX detectors from other brands? Yeah, well on the technology side we've got uh, MPS, which is multi-period sensing. The detector sends uh, a large number of pulses uh, into the ground and from that we can remove a lot of the effects of ground mineralisation. Mm -hmm. We've also got a number of timings that are used which also help to remove that ground mineralisation and also help to target the detector for particular targets depending on your situation. Mm -hmm. And how about helping with uh, high levels of ground mineralisation? We have another mechanism as well in the detector which is automatic ground balance. So you press the quick track button on the detector, raise and lower the coil over the ground and the ground detector automatically tunes itself to the ground, again removing ground mineralisation. Okay. And what about detection depth and sensitivity? How are they max maximised? Well I think the GPX 5000 has got unrivaled depth. We have several technologies in the detector that, that help to contribute to that, but one of the big things that the operator hears is the modulated threshold system that we use, where you can hear the slightest deviation in audio from the threshold tone that allows you to find those really sensitive targets. And that's probably a big difference between something like an e-track detector and something like the GPX. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, Greg, Phil mentioned soil timings. Can you give us a bit more detail about soil timings, what they are and what they do? Yeah, sure. Um, soil timings, uh, as the name suggests, is predominantly about the ground. Um, and so we have different timings, eight in total in the GPX 5000, uh, to handle different ground conditions and different mineralisation conditions. Uh, at one end of the scale, at where it's extremely mineralised ground, we have a sensitive smooth timing, which operates fantastically quiet and smooth and allows you to find targets that other detectors just won't even hear at all. Um, at the non-mineralised end of the scale, we have what we've called a coin and relic timing, um, which uh, will go very, very deep on, uh, on coin and relic sized targets. These graphs, icons and tables further explain the order that you should follow when deciding which soil timing to choose. They also go into more detail as to which timings are more suitable for larger, deeper targets and which are uh, more affected by EMI, like electrical interference. I advise you start with the normal timings, do a noise cancel and a ground balance and start detecting. If you find that that timing is unstable or you're digging ground noises, then try changing to fine gold or enhanced timings. Re-ground balance and try again. If the normal timing is running stable and you want to be a little more aggressive, try sensitive extra or sharp and see how you go. So if you're a relic hunter and you're detecting mineralised ground and you want to get maximum depth, you can't get better than a GPX series detector from MineLab. 